Hello, welcome back. We've been talking about vorticity, and we saw that vorticity, the vorticity of a particle, is a measure of its spin about its axis. So it's basically how much rotation we have in our fluid. It is giving us that that spin, and vorticity comes from the idea of the ability to create vortices. So we've broken vorticity down into two components. We're looking at the relative vorticity that we looked at in the last video. That's giving us the local component of our, of our, of, of our vorticity. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the planetary vorticity. So as we've discussed, we do not just live on a flat earth that is not rotating but we actually live on a spherical earth that is rotating and so fluids on the earth have vorticity simply because the earth is rotating so the same image that we were looking at when we were talking about coriolis we have our earth rotating and we know that no matter where we are on the earth it rotates with the same angular velocity the angular velocity of the Earth, and we calculated that, we see it, we define it with our big omega, and that's equal to 2 pi radians over 24 hours. And so that comes to 7.29 times 10 to the minus fifth radians per second. And that is anywhere. If we're at Quito, or if we're at Buffalo, or if we're at the North Pole, that is our angular velocity on the Earth. So using that, we then want to define our vorticity. Now, planetary vorticity is defined, or vorticity in general, is defined as twice the angular velocity. So our planetary vorticity would be two times omega. So it will be two times our two pi over 24 hours, which would end up with 1.46 times 10 to the minus fourth radians per second. So that's at two omega. Well, that's great. So if we're at the North Pole, we know that this vertical component of our vorticity is 2 omega. But as we mentioned, what we're interested in is what's going to happen to that paddle wheel. So we want the vertical component, no matter where we are on the Earth. And so we need to figure out what the vertical component of our planetary vorticity will be at any point on the Earth. So let's go back to Buffalo. And let's say our paddle wheel is spinning in a current in Buffalo. And so if we have our paddle wheel in Buffalo, we can break up our planetary vorticity into components. So the planetary vorticity is pointing in straight up um, in the, towards the northern hemisphere, uh, towards the northern, north pole as two omega. And we can break that into a component that's pointing this direction of two omega sine theta and a component that's pointing in this direction of two omega cosine theta. And what we're interested in for our planetary vorticity, as we mentioned before, is that vertical component. So what we're interested in is that two omega sine theta. And we see that two omega sine theta, as we know, is equal to F. So lucky for us, we don't have to come up with another variable. Our planetary vorticity is just equal to the Coriolis parameter, um, parameter of F. So F equals two omega sine theta. So now what is vorticity? Well, we've broken it down to get our, when we're looking at the vertical component of our vorticity, that's what we're interested in. So we saw that the vertical component in the local component of our vorticity gave us our relative vorticity zeta of dv dx minus du dy. And then we're going to add that to our planetary vorticity, which was F. And so that's our Coriolis parameter, F equals 2 omega sine theta. And so that gives us our absolute vorticity of zeta plus F. All right, next we will be talking about the potential vorticity, bringing all of this together. <clears throat> 